Hello everyone, my name is Michel Fontaine and uh, I'm President CEO of uh, Windfall Geotech. We are the only company in the world right, right now with a track record of more than 32 client discovery. And I will talk just one minute because I, I, bring with, I brought with me Neil Briggs, is the VP Exploration of Playfair. They just have done some uh, interesting discovery right on our target generated by our algorithms. And uh, just in one minute, we already signed $17 million contract with different companies, same De Beers, Codelco, Butterantium in Chile. We are behind the Noron discovery in a ring of fire. The biggest problem challenge for everyone in this room is the next one will be covered by overburden. That's why Neil will present you is, it's a real project using our tool, took six weeks exactly on our target to validate using MMI. As you know, they have many data and we can shrink the size of, the, of your project by more than 99%. Exactly what we have done for Playfair. Thank you, and uh, I don't have a lot of time, but I would like you know, to Neil to come to present to you what you have done exactly, uh, the work they, they, they have done on this project in Norway. Thank you. Hockenbridge acquired a project in Norway, large project, 300 square kilometers, just to the south of Trondheim, less than a year ago. And the challenge, it was in a highly prospective area, but the challenge was how do you explore it? There was a large amount of data, lots and lots of geophysical conductors, more than you could test in a lifetime. How do you sort these things out? Now, I've known about cards for probably 15 years, and, it, and in that time, at least three times a year, Michelle has told me I should be using cards on my projects, but I never have until now mainly because the projects were not the right type of projects to use this particular tool to evaluate this old data. And this project is. And so we started with cards and huge amount of data, all publicly available. Norway, it's easy to, um, to access all the data digitally and we made up our minds to use this. It's a, it's a it's sort of data mining pattern recognition with your data from your property. It's not comparing your property to a global database. It's just looking at your property and looking at your data, making a model. It works in a similar way to geologists work. You then look at the data, try to find other areas with similar characteristics. And that's what we did. So the project is about 400 kilometers north of uh, Oslo. It's in an area where there's lots of VMS deposits within that circle, which is 75 kilometer radius around the project. There's about 80 million tons of VMS deposits. Um, the property itself contains two past producing uh, copper deposits, the Beshi VMS type deposits, <clears throat> and, a, and a nickel copper deposit which was drilled off by Falconbridge in 1975, but has not been mined. And they're all on the, on the property. And, and they all outcrop. But most of the area is covered with glacial till. Large amount of airborne data, and you can see the on, on the left, the mag, lots of mag. On the other side, all those dark lines are EM conductors. There's just too many to work on. You can't look at them all. So basically, we devised a two-step method. First, using Michel's cards method to reduce the area to more manageable sizes. It was a 300 square kilometer area. Cards gave us about 29 target areas, which covered 
two and a half square kilometers. So limited the area to work. We then went into all those areas and did a second level of filtering on them by doing MMI, soil geochemistry. We figured that no point doing more geophysics. We knew we'd get anomalies. We had no idea what we'd get from, from geochemistry. And the glacial history is fairly complex. One big advantage of MMI is you don't have to understand the glacial history because the ions travel vertically upwards from the source. The source being oxidizing sulfides at the bedrock till interface. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it, it took them maybe, um, yeah, something like six weeks to process all this data. As you can see, we, we did two two different models and each model had 75 million pieces of data in it that they were going through to generate this stuff. More targets came from the copper zinc side than from the copper nickel. You can sort of see the lighter colored areas on that dark blue background. And some of them we figured were quite high priority. All of them had nice geology and a lot of them had no exploration or little exploration. M MMI, as I say, gives you an anomaly directly above oxidizing sulfides. And this is what's important to you. And any, you can sample any mineral soil, not, doesn't have to be beerized, and it can be clays, it can be, as long as it's mineral and not organic. Here you can see up at the top of that hill, there's a rusty outcrop, and that's one of the mines. That's how they find it, prospecting. And, you know, they're, they're oxidizing nicely. That's a little piece from the mine site. Um, you get outcrop in the streams, you get outcrop on some of the high ground, but in between them, it's, it's all covered. So the, the area's been prospected for over 400 years. The, the first mine in this area started in around 1620, 1630, around that time, and operated for 150 years. So all you do is dig a small pit, take a sample, and uh, we sampled all these areas. We took a thousand samples in less than a month out of the 24 targets we went to, we had 15 which gave us at least one sample with more than 50 times background, which is significant. And one of them in particular gave us very, very high numbers of 350 to 400 times background in copper. These are 50,000 parts per billion copper. These are the highest copper numbers ever found with, with MMI in the 20 years or so that it's, it's been in use. This is a report by SGS and basically saying these are going to be above weathering copper sulfides. And we went back and, and did more work. There's, there's some copper and nickel associated with or nearby. You can see the anomaly is, is in a profile here is, is huge. There's a background, a number of times background. And this is what the anomaly looks like. It's 200 meters by 75 meters. No previous work here. Nobody knows anything about it. So in conclusion, the, the two things together, with cards and MMI have zeroed us into this target in very short time frame and at a reasonable cost.